Catch Wrestling Universe, Gorilla Blanco, Kenny Lester in the house. Just want to give you guys a little bit of an update on uh, what's going on with me involving Catch Wrestling uh, and uh, events coming up. A little bit of a recap on my thoughts on the previous event and where I am currently looking at seeing the sport go. Uh, just want to say that uh, congratulations to Joshua Duke and the Sapatero. Thank you for letting me come in and help you guys out. Uh, it was a group effort, in my opinion, to go ahead and pull off an event that large with uh, coming up on close to 200,000 people viewing the event. And I want to thank everybody in the catch wrestling community and the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community for supporting the event. Uh, that being said, we've come a long way since the revitalization and we're just headed straight to the top. Give you guys a short breakdown of the history over the last few years of what's been going on with catch wrestling and how we got to this point. Let me go ahead and re rewind the clock a little bit. So rewinding the clock, uh, the Billy Robinson Classic was something that started getting put together by Joel Bain and a few other people uh, as a tribute to Billy. Uh, now, I'm not going to let the facts get in the way of a good story, so if there's any minor details I'm incorrect on, Everyone feel free to correct me. My apologies. From what I understand, the original Billy Robinson Classic was actually won by Nick Kajia up in New Jersey. And there's been multiple events since then. There's been some Frank Gotch Invitationals. Uh, this was one of the first events where Curran Jacobs made a name for himself, being an ex-former uh, very solid UFC heavyweight. His name slipped in my mind. I know that he wrestled in the Southern uh, Open a couple times. Him and Tom Lawler wrestled in college, and quite a few other guys have been in these uh, catch wrestling tournaments over the years. Now, since that was done, when they decided in 2018, there was a lot of infighting within the sport of catch wrestling, where guys were trying to chase down the champ. There had been a big win with Josh Burnett over Dean Lister in the uh, Metamorphosis event, and the grappling community was really trying to figure out what's a way that we can get eyeballs on ourselves with the emerging new technology, such as things like flow, uh, things like pay-per-views online and whatnot. There's a new access to the market that people are looking to take advantage of. In 2018, Joel Bain put on an event where he decided, you know, rather than just having this be my snake pit in the invitational, I'm going to go ahead and call a couple of these other different organizations that are trying to host events and have them enter a horse into the race. He invited the Catch Wrestling Alliance, he invited uh, Eric Paulson's group and Josh Barnett's group to enter competitors, he invited Scientific Wrestling to enter competitors. Uh, I got the call on short notice and I was excited to gear in to go. Brandon Ruiz got into the event, uh, Chris Cross on Legit Pro Wrestling, who's also a Snake Pit USA affiliate, uh, flew over, was able to get into the event. We had a tip top number of guys in there as well as in the uh amateur division the uh billy robson tournament we had harry smith going in there we had a number of very tough guys when you rewatch the film i think the top three of those guys just as easily could have been in the top been in the bracket of the top eight invitational guys and they all would have fit in just fine uh with that being said Joel put on an event all by himself. He literally had, uh, I hope I don't get him upset with sharing this uh, information, literally had had a heart condition right before the event and still was showing up, pulling it off. I'd never seen anything like it. I was like, this guy's on a whole nother level of mental toughness uh, to show up and pull off an event even with this going on in his life. That being said, the show goes on. The event went off. Curran Jacobs went out there and put on a hell of a performance with guys like Johnny Buck, Eric Hammer. These matches have forever gone down in history. Their YouTube views are still climbing to this day. Some of them reaching, I think, over a million if you look at the actual uh, meter trackers because these were great performances and wrestling is a unique sport that people are willing to watch it forever. It's not something that you really get the same 15 minutes of fame in as like with basketball and other flash in the pan sports. Great wrestling matches live forever. Now, that being said, Joel did a lot for the sport. He uh, put out close to $10,000 for the event to uh, go off. 
Uh, it was a stormy night. It wasn't really the best of conditions to promote it. Things got switched around at last minute dropouts and whatnot. I believe he recouped only around three or 4,000. Most of that was in merchandise sales. Uh, probably lost about six or seven grand. Fairly typical for a new, a new promotion or a new promoter when they're just starting to get the events going. Uh, fortunately, Joel is, does this for the love of, love of the sport. He has another retire, he has another income source and he continues to concentrate on building his affiliates, building his camps and growing the sport. So he took that one on the chin. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys. He took that on the chin. Uh, after that big event where, again, Catch Wrestling was riding sky high. We had just crowned a new champ. We just had all this great momentum. The belt sat for two years. The phone didn't ring. All these great matches didn't really come into fruition. It just went stagnant. Now, it took a new group of promoters who had some momentum. It was uh, Star-Lord put together with a Sapatero uh, Invitational Infrastructure. I had some infrastructure on the production side. He went ahead and gave me a call to ha help him out. He said, you know what? Let's put this on in Orlando. We're having trouble with the COVID regulations. You seem to be able to get the event permits. You have your theater license. You have uh, your COVID testing and all your fire marshal floor plans, your event insurance already in place. Let's go ahead and work together. And I, and I agreed, absolutely. You know, this is for the best of the sport. I'll go ahead and use my consulting service to help you put together this event. And once again, look at the results that happened. Uh, one of the most watched uh, grappling matches, I think, of the year, this will go down as, between uh, uh, Quentin and uh, Curran. It was a great matchup. Uh, as a promoter, I kind of take things as a different look. I look at things from the athlete perspective, from the coach's perspective, and from the promoter's perspective. From a promoter's perspective, it was a great success. We had every seat sold. We were turning away people at the door. We filled literally as many people as we could. I wish we could have ran a bigger venue. I wish we could have done other things, but that wasn't the opportunity presented to, to us. And we had a lot of people who at home were able to tune in and watch a great sh show for free. We did not decide to charge it on pay-per-view. Uh, things were just done to give really catch wrestling the opportunity to blow up and get a lot of views. As a professional, there's there's always things you wish you could have done in post-editing production. I wish we would have had things tighter where we could have had entrance music, where we could have had a few things done a little bit better. That sort of thing that we can work with and we will get better with over time. But that being said, it seems like a lot of you guys enjoyed watching it. Quinn put on a fantastic performance, uh, sent to his butt, challenged into a shoot off, you know, cradle me before I submit you. It was a great story. It's a great show. So that being said, now it's time to move forward. Now, the next event that seemed to have been slated to be up and coming was the Snake Pit Invitational, a three-man tournament that has a fourth-man wild card featuring Anthony Arroyos, Naga Grappler of the Decade, 2000 to 2009, uh, Karinga Conway, who is a well-known, well-respected Tiago, uh, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt out of Orlando, uh, catches catch can wrestler, has hosted two snake pit events in the last year, uh, clinics, and he runs the best wrestling day in the city of Orlando, the Scramble Friday, every Friday at 5 p.m. And quite frankly, he's a great ambassador to the sport. He got the slot number two, and then the slot number three was Anthony Rumble Johnson, who's attended a number of the camps. He's a bought number of the DVDs. He's a Maryland boy, and he uh, was excited to be involved. So those are the first three slots. Now, there are a lot of people who submitted to be involved in the event for that fourth slot, and we decided to have the Invitational in November. Now, the Invitational in November, Anybody can enter, anybody can get a shot for that spot. Now, that being said, what about Quinn? Very fair question for everybody to ask. What about Quinn? Where does he get involved in all this? He was involved in the opportunity to go ahead and enter into the Invitational Tournament. From what I understand, he has declined that offer. Completely reasonable. It sounds like he just doesn't want to do business in Baltimore. 
no big deal. There's business to be done in all sorts of places around the country. All these guys will get an opportunity to meet up again with each other later. That being said, we as a community need to keep moving forward, keep putting on events, and keep putting together matches. I am going to be assisting Snake Pit USA with putting on their events. Now, Snake Pit USA will be held to Snake Pit USA standards. It will be held under Joel Bain's parameters, and I will do my very best to meet those parameters and provide the best quality product available for him. If anyone else wants any assistance with having events put together, whether it's somebody who has experience with lining up event insurance, social media, music rights, uh, COVID regulations, event permits, ring rentals, venue rentals, food, catering licenses, any of and all of the above, I'm more than happy to be able to consult with your uh, event, similar to what we did with Sapatero. That being said, uh, I want us all to go ahead and hit a restart and move forward. Just because one date and one event doesn't work out for an athlete or for an organization doesn't mean we got throughout the baby with the bathwater. Uh, it's going to be great to see down the road here Ian Jones versus Curran Jacobs for a middleweight title. And it's going to be great to see what happens with this uh Snake Pit USA Invitational with a four-man tournament. I can't wait to see who comes out of that Billy Robinson tournament like the last time when Harry Smith went through there and there were monsters in there. I fully expect that there's going to be guys after such a big splash was made off of catch wrestling entering this event to make a name for themselves. Who knows who we're going to see show up in this bracket. So whoever wins this Snake Pit Invitational is automatically going to be in the running to be a top draw in catch wrestling. Whoever wins the Invitational Tournament to get that fourth slot is automatically going to be in a big event with three other studs to make a name for themselves and the catch wrestling and the grappling community. Everyone in grappling knows after seeing the 2018 tournament and seeing the couple matches involving catch wrestlers like Jeremiah O'Neill, even though he did a no pin match and current uh current Jacobs, Quentin Rosenberg, Kringa Conway, they can tell this is a violent art. If you are involved in catch wrestling competitions, you are one of the toughest guys in grappling. So we will continue to move forward. We will continue to put on events. I'm sure LaDuke has events lined up. I'm going to have events lined up in the Orlando area. And I'm going to be more than happy to assist people outside of my territory, the Orlando to Daytona area, with putting on their events. Now, if anybody wants to go ahead and contact me with assistance, I'm more than happy to help them with showing them how to, how to go through things and uh, w work with them as far as any sort of co-promotion with booking athletes, getting, uh, again, all, all the regulatory paperwork in, uh, together and whatnot. That being said, let's all move forward. Let's enjoy the holiday weekend. And let's go ahead and come back on Tuesday with our heads held high. And let's put all the negativity behind us. I think what's happened over the last couple of days has been a lack of communication and just a lack of people having the direction on where to go contact you to handle these things in a professional manner. It's completely acceptable to turn down a booking. It happens all the time in professional wrestling where you say, you know what? That event, that date just doesn't work out for me. It's completely okay to do that. It's completely okay for a promoter to say, that's just not the guy I really need for this show. I'm looking to sell this many seats and this many people for this amount of budget, and I just can't afford you on my show. That's okay. What I want to make sure that happens is nobody deserves to get blackballed from competition. Nobody deserves to get left out of competition. And we do not need to have a situation where the belt gets held up and tied up for two years without being defended. We want to keep athletes active. We want to keep the sport moving forward. And we want to keep building it up so we can build following and we can be consistent with having opportunities for athletes. Now, the COVID regulations are making this tough in a lot of different territories and a lot of different areas of the country. If there's any sort of workaround, contact me. I will go ahead and research and contact municipalities and see what we can do and see if there's any sort of formula to make it possible to pull off an event. 
whether it's with a streaming service, whether it's with sponsors, or you know, if there's a way to go ahead and have a gate with a safe and uh, and regulation manner. That being said, I look forward to all of you guys interacting. I am officially taking over as a Snake Pit USA booker and uh, in charge of promotions. And I can't wait to see all of you guys on these message boards having fun. Everybody keep poking at each other. Everybody keep prodding, keep climbing, keep grinding, keep having a good time looking at uh, all these matchups and uh, talking trash and enjoying yourself. Just at the end of the day, let's remember, we have a great opportunity here to make Catch Wrestling be the next big event. We have the opportunity to rise like Lazarus, to come back to the top. We have great athletes involved with this sport, and even greater athletes are going to continue to keep jumping in. I've talked to multiple college coaches who saw the event who have NCAA champions. They want to enter into the brackets, who uh, want to start getting matches booked. As soon as I can get all these uh, shows booked out in Orlando, I can't wait to start running my 600, 900,000 person venues that I'm used to running to where I can create the budget to really put together some great catch wrestling events. Uh, Josh the Duke shared he feels the same way. He wants to be able to run events where he can go ahead and afford to put on quality cards. Uh, Joel Bain has lost money. He's taken money out of his own pocket to help grow the sport time and time again. So there's plenty of people here who want to do the right thing to help grow the sport. And I'm just hoping we all work together to go ahead and make that happen. Uh, Orlando to Daytona, I'm more than happy to hold down my end of the bargain. Uh, Josh seems to be doing a great job in the Tampa and Sarasota area and uh, elsewhere. And I firmly believe that working with uh, Snake Pit USA uh, from Maryland to New Jersey, New York area, we're going to draw out some great guys in that mid-Atlantic Northeast area into that inv into the qualifier tournament, and which in turn will wind up in the Invitational. Uh, that's my chat here for now. For all you guys who listen to all of it, thank you very much. And remember, some things are just best left wild.